So today, we are going to show you how to organize your tackle boxes and keep them clean. And I will show you how to, or I will tell you how to make your tackle boxes clean from rust if you accidentally leave them on the rain. All right, so these here, they are rooster tailed twitch baits. Um, the, this is a green eyed spinner bait, black eyed spinner bait. This is supposed to mimic a small crayfish, a crawdad. This is a nice sized crappy grub with a quarter ounce head on it. This is just a quick jig with a red with green flake worm on a leader rig. This is a rubber worm imitation lure for small panfish. This, on the other hand, is a stud for small lure, small hooks such as this. Because then you can put this on. Give me a second, this thing is too. All right. And then once this is on, it's the same thing as any other lure. Good for panfish, good for bass. This is a rubber Sanko worm. This is the same thing except for it has a jig head on it. Same thing except for it has a hook with a leader on it. This is a wacky rig Sanko. I forgot to show you the treble hook. Most fishermen know about those. Whopper popper feed footed frog. Swim bait footed frog. Bottom water. Top water. Swim bait. Swim bait footed frog and this is a big shad lure it's, it's supposed to look like a shad it's for bass and big catfish and snakehead baby bluegill swim bait this is a trolling thing for big saltwater fish it's called a swim bait oyster cracker this is a bottom water imitation of a worm this You've seen it over there. Swim bait shad. This is a bottom water crayfish lure, and when you pull on it, these claws flap around like that. This is the same thing as this, except for it has a twister tail. This is the same thing as the little crayfish dude over there, except for it's a Ned rig. This is a lure for catfish. It is weedless. It has a spinner behind it. It has a Texas rig hook with a lead weight there. This is a, a treble hook and single hook swim bait. Same thing here except for it's a twister tail. This is a long jerk bait. This is a bluegill jerk bait and this jerk bait is for perch. This is a top water Guggen squad, or not Guggen squad. It's from Bass Pro Shops and it is $8 and it's actually signed by the person who made it. This is a popper. I almost forgot this guy. This is a crank rattle twister tail. This is a Guggen Squad lipless crankbait, red, orange, or red, yellow. Crayfish, red, gold, black. This is, oh, that's a lipless crankbait too. This is a small silver rattle trap, if you can listen. It rattles, just like these guys. Same thing here, except for it's bigger and it has the spot and it's a louder rattle. This is a little panfish rig. You just pull it through the water and this tail just swims behind. This is a mimic of an eel. It works pretty well with a bullet shot head. This is a jitterbug right here, this top one. And then down here, this is a hula popper. They are mostly used for bass. And laser eyed spinner bait, red eye or green eyed spinner bait, he has one too, I think. Yep. And um, red eyed spinner bait, black eyed spinner bait. Alright, so we're going to show you how we put like lures away. I usually start with stuff like this, and I put them in, and then I grab like 
bobbers and stuff and put them in with those weights and then I grab my hook I have hooks and line and I open up the top I set them down here and I grab my line set it right there See, this happens to me all the time. I have these spare hooks. I set them on the side here. And with the lowers, I also put these here. These lowers, like spinners, I have spinners go together. I put them in here, like this one. And then stuff with like this fluff, I stick them in. That all upside down so nobody gets hooked. So you don't get hooked. And what's the nickname for this little contraption you have made? This? The, yes. I call it a football. And then like the, with this like extra stuff, I like to stick them in the sides here with the, the extra separators. And with hooks, I close the tackle box, open up this, I stick them in here with the knife. And then with this, I stick them in here, and then with frogs, I gather them, and put them all in their own slot here. And I stick this frog with this guy. And then I have my worms here. I also put this, with those, put worm. Where I go, worm. I thought this guy right. I, I thought the little this, guy with the jig head went in here. Oh yeah. So oh, we're gonna put him with here. Uh, yeah. And then worm, worm, and worm jig. And that's it for my tackle box. All right, so now we're putting them away. I prefer to put my jointed swim baits with each other. There's a jig head here, along with a rubber bait. It's a crappy grub. This little hook, I put it in there. Spinner rig. This, I forgot to show you, is a top water snake head magnet. I put him up on the top. Now I'm going to put my weights away. Two ounce lead weight. Half ounce or quarter ounce. Quarter, quarter ounce quarter. drop shot weight. This is a quarter ounce drop shot weight as well. Just a different shape. Now the giant trolling lure. Action. He normally would be separate, but for today, I'm going to put him up in this spot with big boys, such as this man right here. So he goes up there, and he goes up there. This is just the normal swim bait. I put him there. Crayfish, as like that, goes there. This guy goes in with him. These two go separate or in a separate container, but together. This guy, this guy, and this guy will all go together most of the time. So they can go right over here. I'm going to put my bobbers in. This is Power Bait. If you haven't heard of it, I highly recommend it. And. We have the popper, goes up in the top, crankbaits. These guys go up here, or not up here, this guy actually goes over here. The crankbaits go in here, and since I have three larger crankbaits and a small tackle box, you have to organize them the right way so they actually all fit as so. I put my lipless crankbaits out. Just 
travel times. Come on, dude, so that's something you don't do. That's something you don't do. Put them all up together. I prefer to put them in here. Alright. Hula popper with it is a modified hula popper. So if fish do end up seeing this hook and they just try to bite out the tail. I've modified it so there is a hook in with the tail. Comment down below if you can see that. Put him with the other popper. This is a frog mimic lure. My little brother calls it a bullfrog because if you push down on the rubber, it looks like it has horns because of the hooks. Put that in there along with the jitterbug. So I put these, this one, and this one together in with no one but up here. This is an, is a mimic of an eel. So I put that in with the big boys. And then spinner baits. Snap swivel. Put them in there. And then the rubber baits, they will stay in this bag and in the bottom. This is a cork handled double piece panfish magnet, or not magnet, panfish rod. You, if you don't know, there's this thing that you twist and then it lowers this to put your reel in there. And then you can put your hook on this nub or on here. I recommend on there. It comes apart. So, for minimization, and it's a lightweight panfish rod for panfish, trout, and um, other small fish. And the recommended line weight is four to six pounds, and four to eight pounds actually, but so. Easy to put back together. Pull on the knot, and then it's back together. This is his other rod. This is the reel that came with that rod. He just put it on this one because the lure he chose to use for this rod is a little bit too big for the other rod. This is a weedless purple with red flake um, jig head Ned rig almost. And yet again, it doesn't have the Get it for your hook, so put it just on there. Two piece as well for minimization. And the last one was fire plexiglass. This one is plexiglass and handle is foam cork with plastic. And the top of it is made special, if you can see how this is thicker than this. That is because when you're reeling, you don't want it to just go like this. You want it to just keep it like that because if it was like all the same, then it would have a very bad snapping point there. So the reel is, the reel is mainly plastic, then you have the metal, and the rod is fiberglass. So are these. The metal, this is, what? This is metal. We have six pound line, and below the six pound line, there's eight pound line. And you have the foam handle that also minimizes for, for um, storage reasons, just like that. And then you can put back together. And this would, all, this reel this would also be a spin cast reel. Yes, it would also be a spinner reel. Same with the other one, but this is the reel for that. All right. The newest, so, this rod to my collection. It is a saltwater and catfish rod. This is a rubber butt stopper, so whenever it's like whenever you're deep sea fishing and you have to push push it down, it doesn't damage the handle itself. It has a wood handle with salt water with a saltwater reel, and what poundage line is this? Like 
150. 150 pound line. No, it doesn't. Now it's more like 15. This is a saltwater slash catfish hook meant for bigger fish such as catfish and stripers. This over here is a three ounce diamond weight with a snap swivel. The rod is made out of fiberglass. Uh, it looks like uh, maybe carbon fiber. Carbon fiber. We're not entirely sure, but this is a unique rod because it only has three eyelets. And when you, where you put the hook, since most of the time you don't have very small hooks on these rods, so you got you can't put them on this. You gotta put the hook down on here or on here. I prefer on here though. And if you're really looking to be safe in your car or anything, then right there like that. And here's one side of it. It's about a six foot rod, right? Yeah. Um I they have a walnut. Walnut? Yeah. Alright, so it's a walnut handle with carbon fiber, right? Or uh, possibly carbon fiber and plexiglass with fiberglass. fiberglass sorry. With the handle, which is walnut. Rubber bus stop. Expensive reel. Casting mechanism is a uh, more complicated casting mechanism. It's not the flip thing or button press. This right here is like that flip or button. If you pull on this now, it is not here. It is not gonna come out. So if you pull this back like that, it comes out. It comes out with ease. Rubber band looking line. And like a bait caster rod, this will get birds' nests. And I do not recommend bait casting rods. Like some people.